Uh, so let's uh, carry on and tell you more about this story, shall we? And uh, take you to live pictures of uh, Gurney, the beach there in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And you can see that the parade that we mentioned uh, a few moments ago that is taking place to mark 50 years since Turkey's peace operation is underway. There's also an air show uh, being held a little bit later on to mark the 50th anniversary. And you can see uh, the flotilla there in full display. Let's go to our correspondent who's there, Obeda Hito in Gurney. We will go to him shortly, but our correspondent Andrew Hopkins is also watching on. We'll go to both Andrew and Obeda as the, uh, the story unfolds. Obeda, I know, I'm sure you can see the same pictures that we can see. We are expecting 50 vessels to take part in this parade over the next hour or so in front of the president of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, that is Ersin Tata. He is watching on, as is the Turkish Minister of National Defence, Yasha Gula. They will be uh, watching the flotilla parade in front of the spectators and the crowds there in Gurney in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. We are expecting the parade to be led by the TCG Anadolu. 49 other vessels taking place. Let's cross then to Andrew Hopkins, who is uh, watching on, our diplomatic correspondent. Andrew, we, we heard from you a few moments ago. You were at the, uh, the celebrations earlier on today when Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan was, uh, was in attendance. But what are we expecting over the next, uh, the next hour or so? Well, we're expecting a, a naval parade, and we might get to see a bit of it going on behind me here in Gurney in northern Cyprus, Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. It really is still scorching hot here. It's uh, 6 o'clock in the evening, and we're regularly seeing temperatures of about 40 degrees or so. And you can see a lot of people gathered here, not just Turkish people and Turkish Cypriots, but also some tourists who are here as well on holiday, getting the chance to see what's going to happen in this naval parade that's uh, just getting in the way at the moment. And uh, what we're expecting to see is, as you said, the TCG Anadolu is going to be the lead ship in all of this. This is the biggest ship in the Turkish Navy. It only came into service last year and it's an amphibious assault ship so very similar to an aircraft carrier and it's been fitted out to be able to uh, for drones and such like to land and take off from it also helicopters and we're going to see some of the Turkish drones involved in this show uh, later on today also some F-16s as well uh, fighter jets and on top of that uh, what is known here in Turkey is the Turkish Stars and the Solo Turk. These are aerobatic teams who are going to put on a, an air show for us as well in a, in a little time after that. So that's what all of these people here are effectively waiting for, waiting to see what it all looks like when it all comes together in the next few minutes. Hopefully you can still hear me, Andrew. We can hear the atmosphere. It's, uh, it's quite loud where you are. But if you can still hear me, I know you were at the celebrations earlier on today as well that were attended by uh, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Can you just give us a run through of, of sort of what happened earlier on today and the significance of this 50th anniversary? Well, what happened earlier today, we had this uh, parade, basically a large parade going through Lefkosia, which involved members of the military and also some students and other people as well getting involved. And what happened was this parade uh, took uh, in sort of like a commemoration, if you like, paying tribute to all the members of the Turkish military, the Turkish Cypriots, who died in that, uh, what is known in Turkey, in, in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, as a peace operation uh, in 1974, when the Turkish military arrived to intervene after just a few days before. There had been a, a coup here on Cyprus, effectively led by the Greek military, who were in power in Greece at that time, and also Greek Cypriots, to sort of overthrow the system of government which was in place at the time and unite the country with Greece. Obviously a very historic event at that time, 50 years ago, but also probably symbolic now as well. Obviously 50 years, quite a sort of a, a memorable point in terms of anniversaries, but also 
marks 50 years without a solution on the island of Cyprus, despite all the United Nations talks that have been held since then, despite all the efforts to get the two sides together, and they've been basically negotiating around one particular idea, which is a, a bicommunal, bizonal uh, federation. Uh, there's been no success, and this is where you get politicians like Ersin Tatar coming from, who's the current Turkish Cypriot president. He was elected in 2020 on a platform of saying that we've had enough of all of this because for 50 years the Turkish Cypriot part of the island has been existing with economic embargoes in place. We can't develop properly. He believes the Greek Cypriot side is not sincere in its uh, negotiation. So he's saying we should have a two-state solution going forward. And that's what we've been hearing about from the Turkish president and the Turkish Cypriot in those speeches earlier on today uh, at the, this huge parade which happened uh, several hours ago. OK, Andrew, we'll, we'll keep you there for now if that's OK. But let's cross uh, to Ankara and speak to Ahmet Kessa. Uh, because he is uh, a retired full colonel of the Turkish Armed Forces, an associate professor of political science at international relations at the Hassan Kalyoncu University, and joins us now. Thank you very much for your time and for, for talking to us. Um, I just want to start by asking, I suppose, on something that Andrew was, was touching on there, because this is a marking the 50th anniversary of Turkey's peace operation, but it is still very much a live political issue, isn't it? Uh, of course, Paul, uh, as Andre already mentioned, of course, uh, that is a very significant day in uh, Turkish uh, Cyprus Republic uh, because for almost uh, half a century, uh, it means that the Turkish uh, Cyprus Republic citizens could uh, succeed to survive without any fear or threaten uh, for their lives uh, by another party. Uh, under the protection of uh, Turkish armed forces since the peace operation. So that's why uh, it's a very, uh, I think, uh, a handmark uh, in the Cyprus history as well, we can say. Uh, we can maybe uh, remind our audience that the, uh, on the day of the exact uh, Cyprus peace operation started, which is declared by uh, prime minister of the time, Bülent Ecevit, during that time, uh, this operation is not being conducted for war, but for peace, and it will bring peace not only to Turks, but also the Greeks as well in the island. And we see in the last 50 years, almost half a century, that it happened in this way. And peace came to the island after this operation. Can you bring us the details of what you can over the last 50 years, of the attempts that we've had to try and bring not just the peace, but the, the sort of stability as well, the political stability that perhaps is still lacking on the island? Uh, of course, when we look at the historical background of the island, uh, we see that uh, till the time, uh, until 1950s, uh, there was, a, uh, let's say, gate starting from uh, the end of the World War I under the colonizing uh, British uh, administration after the uh, Ottoman Empire. Uh, and after, uh, in the midst of uh, 20th century, uh, the Enosis plan uh, has given start by the uh, Greeks, uh, by the effect of the Greece, and, uh, which is uh, a unification plan of the Greek with Greece. But when we look at the history, Cyprus never belonged to Greece. Uh, it belonged to Egypt, other countries, Hittites, Roman Empire, Ottoman Empire, and it was rented by United Kingdom from the Ottoman Empire in 1878, during the Ottoman-Russian War of 1878, uh, but never returned, and it was attached to UK uh, in 1878. Uh, and uh, then uh, invaded in 1914 uh, by UK officially. Uh, after that, uh, ap starting between 1950s and 1964, uh, there were some attempts, of course, uh, in the island uh, to construct a merged, uh, let's say, uh, under the uh, constitution, a merged Cyprus Republic. But we have seen that because of the Enosis plans, 
and the EUCA terror organization, uh, the Greek side of the island started massacres and slaughters against the Turkish, his Turkish uh, islanders, Cypriot, uh, Cypriots. And he can say that, for example, in only uh, between 1960 and 1963, uh, 103 Turkish villages were enforced to abandon. Uh, after the peace operation, there were a lot of mass graves belonging to Turkish uh, islanders we have experienced. And never they reached to solution. Uh, when we come to close, in 2008, there was another uh, United Nations attempt for a solution, which is known as the Kopi Annan's name, Annan Plan. And even in this plan, for example, we have witnessed that the Turkish side uh, voted more than 65% yes for the plan. They accepted. But when we returned to the Greek side, they refused by 75%. So uh, I think the Greek perception of the island is always that island belongs to Greeks only, and they do not accept that Turks are there. But we see that until the end of the 18th century, the population of the Turks were always more than the Greeks in the island normally, and it was never belonged to the Greeks. And uh, Turkey conducted this peace operation, of course, by taking the authority from the guarantee agreement of the 1960, because this agreement gives uh, three countries, United Kingdom, Turkey, and Greece, the uh, possibility or authority of the operation, unless the other parties do not accept to conduct operation, if any one side conducts unlawful uh, attacks against the other parties. Okay, so. Uh, I mean, I'll just, just stop you there if, if, for, for now, if that's OK. We'll keep you for the next half an hour or so. But we, we do want to take uh, our viewers back to Gurney uh, and the live pictures of the, the parade, as we can, can see now. As we mentioned earlier with Andrew, it is being sort of headed by the, uh, the, the star of the show, really, the TCG, Anna Dolo. Abeda Hitto is in Gurney, joins us now. We'll uh, just... Uh, see these pictures of the parade making its way uh, across not far from where you are, Abeda. Uh, can you just tell us exactly sort of the logistics, really, I suppose, of this parade over the next hour or so, where it's starting, where it's finishing, and the significance of where you are? Uh, this is the oh. exact point where the Turkish soldiers in 1974 made their initial attack uh, onto the island. Uh, this is the town of Girne, and these ships that you see going behind me are Turkish naval ships. They've made the trip from Turkey all the way to the island. Uh, yesterday they came and they anchored here off the coast, and this morning they were uh, around the coastline, and then uh, earlier this afternoon they went uh, They went to the uh, to to the east, actually, northeast, and they gathered there into their flotilla, into their positions, their formation, and now over the last 10, 15 minutes, we've seen them make their way across the coastline where thousands of people have gathered uh, to watch this uh, huge naval parade. They're led, the flotilla is led by the TCG Anadolu, which sits right behind me, uh, right in the center now of the harbor. Uh, there is a large protocol delegation also here, including the Turkish defense minister, Yashar Klar, as well as the uh, president of TRNC, uh, Ersin Tatar, as well as many other uh, representatives from the Turkish Cypriot and the Turkish military. Uh, these ships are, uh, there are around 50 ships, including different frigates, uh, Corvette-class warships, and others. There's also going to be some fighter jets uh, putting on a show, the Turkish stars, Yildizlar, as well as solo Turk are going to be putting on a show. There are also going to be TBT and TB, uh, TB2 and TB3 drones, Bayraktar drones, as well as uh, helicopters involved in this military parade. It's carrying uh, significant symbolism and importance for everybody here uh, because it's been 50 years since that operation uh, saved Turkish Cypriots from ongoing oppression from uh, the Greek side of the island. Now, today, 
today is even more significant because of this military parade happening. Uh, this, the involvement of the TCG on Adolu and these other ships is carrying significant symbolism uh, for Turkey and Turkish uh, and the Turkish Cypriots here. They are showing their uh, strength. They are showing that they are together, that they're unified. We even saw in the delegation that visited today alongside President Erdogan, people from all the parties, the opposition party uh, and the MHP party were all in attendance today at the official ceremonies. And President Erdogan even uh, made it clear that he wants to show the world that we are united, that Turkish people are united in their support for uh, for the uh, independence of uh, Turkish Cypriots. Now, the issue in the past was being discussed as uh, in terms of uh, creating a unified island, some kind of federal system. But after the messages uh, we heard today from both President Erdogan and President Ersin Tatar, it seems that the two-state solution is the only solution that that is being sought here uh, on this side of the island uh, and they are looking for independence and this kind of military might uh, is going to help them possibly uh, and this is something that is not only significant for people here in uh, in TRNC it's significant also for Turkey as well it spent the last 10 years trying to expand and strengthen its military industry and ability to produce world class military products and the TCG Anadolu has become the crown jewel of the Turkish naval fleet. Well, let's talk it about cost that, a billion Obeda. dollars and it carries over 1,200 soldiers. I think there's a slight delay, but let, let's talk it about the TCG Anadolu. Obeda. Why exactly is it tanks? The, the star of the show? Well, because this is a world-class amphibious stealth uh, a stealth ship, it is going to be carrying, or it is carrying, I should say, uh, TB2, TBT2s, TB3s, Akinji drones. Uh, its ability to launch these drones and land them at sea. It can launch helicopters and land helicopters at sea. It was originally designed, actually, to be able to uh, land F-35B fighter jets. But now that that's out of the picture, Turkey is working on alternatives, its own uh, Kızıl Elma jet, Khan jet. These kinds of military technologies are uh, are made in Turkey by Turkish engineers and this is something that Turkey takes pride in and I think people here in uh, TRNC also take pride in that and they recognize that Turkey's role militarily in protecting them in the past and even in the future is going to be uh, a pivotal to their existence existence and to their continued ability to live in peace and prosperity. The president today said that there is no other option except peace and prosperity and independence for the people here in northern Cyprus and that Turkey was going to do whatever it took to make sure that that continues here on the island. Uh, Obeda, what, what, uh, what have people been telling you uh, where you are about, uh, about today and how proud they are of events taking place? Well, people have a lot of mixed feelings about what happened 50 years ago because many people lost family members. Many people were displaced from their homes and couldn't return. But at the same time, they have a lot of positive feelings and they want to make sure that the memory uh, of the sacrifices that people made uh, 50 years ago, uh, the participation of the Turkish military, the, brother, uh, the brotherly bond between the two nations, the two communities, Communities is sustained. They want to pass this on to younger generations. I've seen a lot of patriotism since I've been here. We've been here for the past two days. There have been a lot of preparations, ongoing preparations for these parades, for these programs, for everything that uh, has been going on throughout the day today. Uh, the, the, the people have been involved, young people, elderly people. We've seen a lot of veterans, some from here on the island, some that have come from Turkey, uh, and they are really uh, uh, happy to be here and they appreciate the effort that's being put in uh, to make sure that people understand the sacrifices that were made to make this a reality and I want to show you here look uh, these are Turkish Air Force planes flying across 
right on top of the TCG Anadolu. You see there also Turkish helicopters now flying over the flotilla. And you hear some clapping applause from the audience, uh, from uh, the audience where the President Ersin Tatar and the Turkish Minister of Defense are sitting and watching this military parade go by. And you see the TCG Anadolu right there in the center, the centerpiece of this flotilla, the crown jewel of the Turkish naval fleet. Uh, and this is something that's carrying a lot of symbolism and importance uh, for everybody here on the island and for everybody at home in Turkey. And I think even people on the other side of the island uh, are viewing this with a lot of earnest uh, seeing this kind of military power uh, just on the other side of the island is a very strong message uh, and very clear message that uh, Turkish Cypriots have support. They're not being abandoned. They weren't abandoned before and they won't be abandoned in the future. Obaida, we had uh, a chat with Ahmed Kesser a few moments ago who is laying out the historical context for us of where we are uh, with the island of Cyprus. With this symbolism and with Turkey marking 50 years since the peace operation, where are we diplomatically at this very moment and, and what are the next stages over the next few weeks, months and years? Well, I think the, the stage has been set very clearly today after we heard from both presidents. Uh, and, and the stage is that uh, th there are no other options other than a two-state solution. Now, Turkey has been uh, trying to push for the recognition of TRNC as an independent state. Uh, they're the only country in the world that recognizes TRNC as an independent state. But they've made some progress through the organization of Turkic states, for example, uh, to garners, garnish support for TRNC. They haven't taken the step, actually, to recognize it as a state, but it seems like there are some intentions by some of these countries in the organization of Turkic states to recognize TRNC. Now, those efforts are going to have to expand much wider. We also know from Ersin Tatar that uh, he is personally also in touch with many countries uh, trying to advocate for uh, recognition of TRNC. So this is going to be uh, the new status quo, in my opinion. Uh, the efforts uh, in the UN uh, and uh, other platforms to try and find a solution that would possibly unify the island in some kind of federal system seems like ha have lost all steam uh, and it seems like the opinion is generally that they want to have independence here. They have support from their allies like Turkey and other Turkic states to make the claim for independence. Now it's going to be about how much are they going to push on the international level at the United Nations and other platforms to get that recognition. It could take some time, but these kinds of programs and this kind of military uh, uh, mi military parade is definitely sending a strong message to people here on the island as well as to the rest of the world about what the intentions are. TRNC needs to have full independence according to Turkey and people here on TRNC and they're going to convince or try to at least in the coming years convince the rest of the world that that's what they deserve. Abida for now thank you very much. Uh, let's cross back to uh, Ankara and uh, Ahmet Kesa retired full colonel of the Turkish Armed Forces, who joins us now. Uh, Ahmet, good to talk to you again. Thank you for holding on. Uh, I'm sure you're seeing these, these pictures of this uh, naval parade down in Gurney in TRNC as we see uh, the, uh, the Air Force arriving as well. Um, can I just ask, from your personal point of view, this must be a, a proud day, and does it bring back memories? Did you uh, participate in, in anything like this? Uh, Paul, well, uh, I think uh, this passage uh, reminded me uh, last year's 100th uh, anniversary of the foundation of the Turkish Republic. Remember, in the Turkish Bosporus, uh, there uh, was another uh, naval parade, uh, including all these naval ships, air force units, and etc. So this is also <coughs> a kind of a uh, very significant historical landmark, uh, which shows that Turkey attains the same importance as the foundation of Republic of Turkey to the foundation of Turkish Cyprus Republic as well. So uh, the decisiveness to protect the Turkish
people in Turkish Cypriots in the island decisiveness uh, to protect the Republic. And I think after the uh, refusal of the Anan plan in 2008, the decisiveness that the belief uh, of the unique solution for two-state uh, solution. So now I think in turn in the diplomatic ways, as Andre already mentioned, to gain the support of the Turkish republics first, uh, to recognize the independence of the Turkish uh, Republic, Cyprus Republic, and then carrying the issue to the United Nations uh, by using the self-determination right of the Cypriot Turks and uh, to have recognition from globally all over the world starting. Of course, it will take time, but all the diplomatic impulse and uh, efforts will be given on this issue, we understand, from this significant moment. Because uh, Turkey, by using all the deterrence and decisiveness, uh, by using all the military means and powers, which we can say that it's a kind of usage of smart power, because we can see the uh, means of the hard power in the uh, field, but also Turkey starts to use them in a peaceful way. So it's a kind of usage of soft power as well. So a mix, uh, mixture of soft power and hard power together makes a smart power, as Joseph Nye mentioned. So by using the smart power, I think Turkey and the Republic of uh, Turkish Republic of Cyprus will reach their aims, objectives uh, in the future uh, today, earlier or later, I think. So, so, do you, do you uh, so this is that's why very important. You, you feel, Ahmed, then that today, the 50th anniversary is going to act as a, as a kind of catalyst to try and restart, to kickstart uh, the process for, for lasting peace for and, sure. and settlement? For sure, Paul. I think uh, because uh, in the last 50 years, uh, none of the international efforts uh, could reach any kind of different solution. So that's why I think uh, the best option state as two-state solution, because we have seen that this is working. Nobody is giving harm to each other. And now it's time to uh, just give the identification of this de facto structure, a de jure structure, which is already living there. So juristically and legally to accept is the only solution, I think. That's why it is very important after this 50th anniversary, I think. You, you mentioned soft power, you mentioned smart power. How does Turkey overcome the fact that, that there perhaps isn't a, a huge amount of international support at the moment for, for the idea? Uh, yeah, that's very important because uh, in smart power, Turkey should use uh, the soft power means as its diplomatic uh, efforts or diplomatic connections, for example, in uh, Turkic states, uh, Union, Turkic States Organization, uh, also <clears throat> Arabic Conference, uh, all uh, Turkey's power uh, in United Nations uh, and within other allies countries as well. So by using all these diplomatic efforts and power, if Turkey can uh, win uh, the efforts of other allied countries as well, I think uh, this will help uh, the mixing the hard power with the uh, soft power as well. Because till now we have seen that after the Turkish peace operation, without using the hard power, Turkey always insisted peaceful solutions by using the soft power, by relying on the soft power. But today we see that if needed, Turkey without any hesitation will use the hard power as well, but do not want that, want to reach a peaceful solution. That's why using smart power is the best solution. Uh, and all the parties should accept this de facto independence of the Turkish Cyprus Republic as well. This is de facto already living there, a surviving state, uh, a sovereign state, uh, whether uh, other states accept or not accept. Only the step is recognizing the independence. And that is the next and final step will be, I think, within the following decade. Uh, Ahmed, for now, Thank you very much. Let's go back to Abida Hitto, who is there in Gurney watching this uh, naval parade unfold. You are watching uh, TRT World. These are live pictures from Gurney in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, where today, July the 20th, marks 50 years since Turkey's peace operation 
uh, began on the island of Cyprus. And uh, Abida is watching things unfold. For our viewers who are just tuning in, remind us what we are what we are wit witnessing right now. 50 ships, 12 naval aircraft, F-16s, attack helicopters. We've seen it all, Abida. Absolutely, uh, a very, uh, a very giant and big uh, parade, naval parade. That is, this flotilla has been uh, going through this part of the harbor, right across from Girne, the town of Girne, uh, uh, where the operation initially started in 1974. This is where the soldiers that came uh, and actually made a landing on the beach to start their attack into the island. Uh, as this is where it started. So these ships have been coming behind me across the coastline here uh, for the past 20 minutes or so at the center of this flotilla of this parade uh, is the TCG Anadolu. Uh, this is an amphibious strike ship uh, and it is the crown jewel of the Turkish Navy, the largest ship in the Turkish Navy. Uh, it carries 1,002, more than 1,200 soldiers. It's capable of carrying dozens of tanks and armored personnel carriers, helicopters, uh, fighter jets, drones, and we've seen all of those things actually today in Girne, around Girne, and in the sea uh, on the coast here by Girne. And what we're seeing now, actually, we're hearing the sound of jets. We're going to get some F-16 fighter jets uh, uh, that are going to fly over also this flotilla. Uh, the ships that are involved in the flotilla include frigates, some Corvette-class ships. Uh, they're making their way across, and there's a large delegation here, a military delegation, as well as President Ersin Tatar, the president of the TRNC and Yashar Güler, the Minister of Defense of Turkey, all in attendance here. And there are thousands of people here lined up across the coastline in Girne to see this uh, occasion, this really rare occasion of such a large naval flotilla just going so close to the coastline uh, towards uh, the, uh, towards the uh, I guess it's the south at this point. So these ships have been here since yesterday. Uh, they parked. We saw them park around here in the harbor area. Area. They hung out and then this morning uh, they were moving around a little bit earlier this afternoon. They moved south. They created their formation and now they're making their way through. We saw just a few moments ago uh, also two Bayraktar drones come and fly in real low over the crowd of people that are watching. There were also helicopters and other kinds of uh, uh, other kinds of uh, of, uh, uh, of airplanes, larger airplanes, personnel carriers, uh, C-class uh, carriers, I should say, uh, that flew over this harbor area. And there's a, a kind of sense of excitement here. There's a military band playing. Uh, also, there's another section of uh, this area where this uh, parade is going on, where there are young people carrying flags, uh, also carrying wreaths uh, and laying them down at the monu monument here in Girne. So this is carrying a lot of symbolism. I think it's an emotional day for many people here, 50 years is a huge landmark. Uh, it's been 50 years since the operation started, but it was decades of uh, struggle for the people here on the island, especially the Turkish Cypriots uh, leading up to the operation. They weren't being given their rights. They were being treated poorly. And actually, they only lived, inhabited about 3% of the island because they had been displaced and removed and uh, moved from place to place in the years leading up to the military operation uh, that that actually liberated them from this kind of aggression and oppression. Now, the TRNC uh, accounts for about 30 to 36 percent of the entire island. There is a 180 kilometer border uh, known as the Green Line that divides the two uh, parts of the island. Uh, but what we're hearing today from the officials is that they want an independent state, and here they go. The jets are flying right over uh, the uh, parade here. Uh, there are going to be two different kinds of flyovers. There's another one headed here. There are the Turkish uh, stars, the Turkish Yildizlar team, as well as the solo Turk team. Uh, and these people uh, who fly these jets are the best pilots, <coughs> the best pilots in Turkey, and uh, they are famous around the world. They go all around the world, conduct these kinds of flyovers and air shows, but today they're coming here with a different message. 
They want to make sure that people here in Turkish, uh, uh, the Turkish Cypriots here in TRNC know that Turkey, its military might is behind them. The Turkish people are behind them. And we heard very clearly today from President Erdogan that the Turkish people are behind them. There was a very interesting uh, delegation of people who came with President Erdogan, and he made it a point to say that all Turkish political society, all of Turkish society is behind the TRNC, whether it be from the opposition or not, they're all united and they're here to, to back TRNC uh, to the end. OK, Abida, uh, for now, thank you. Let's get more on that because our diplomatic correspondent, Andrew Hopkins, is, I believe, in and amongst the crowd uh, watching this naval parade. But, Andrew, I did want to... Uh, ask you a question. As the diplomatic correspondent, Abida mentioned it there, that we heard from Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan earlier on today. We've heard comments from President of the uh, TRNC, Ersin Tatar, as well. Has there been any comment, any reaction from the other side of the island, from the Greek Cypriot side of the island? Well, not yet that we know of, but the issue of... Uh... Cyprus becoming a, a two-state island, if you like, has been around for a few years now since Ersin Tata was elected to office in 2020. So the fact that they are saying this at the moment is no surprise to the Greek Cypriot side. And they say it's not an acceptable solution for the island. They say we should continue with the uh, UN back talks, which have been going on for quite a few years. And they've also suggested that uh, the talks should resume where those negotiations in Kranz, Montana, in Switzerland, left off in 2017, uh, which I think from the Turkish Cypriot point of view, from Ersin Tata's point of view, uh, they, that's been rejected and a certain amount of eye-rolling at that prospect because at that point, certainly the Turkish side and the Turkish Cypriot side believe they went further than ever before in those talks. They offered a quicker and a more sort of sophisticated withdrawal of uh, Turkish military from the island. And this was still not accepted by the Greek Cypriot side, who were at the time uh, facing an election, the Greek Cypriot leader. And there's been a fair few reports, even on the Greek Cypriot side, that that was one of the factors why the Greek Cypriot leader didn't want to take the leap at the time. Now, there's also another new president on the Greek Cypriot side as well. Uh, but certainly going back seven years and picking up where they left off is not something the current Turkish Cypriot president wants to entertain at all. Uh, he said clearly for the last four years and continues to do so, do so. he wants this two-state solution. So what we have now is earlier this year the UN Secretary General appointed a new personal envoy uh, to look into whether there's any basis for a restart in the <coughs> excuse me, negotiations between the two sides. She's just finished her report and has presented it to Antonio Guterres. And we're expecting an announcement from him really at any point in the next few weeks as to what he's going to do next, if any. So I think we'll see at this point whether this two-state solution, which, which already is uh, sort of has a difficult future at the moment because of the, the lack of international support, whether it will get off the ground or not. Because um, we do have a, I think they do have a hope in a way, because the, this new personal envoy in her report, we know she's been talking about things like uh, thinking about this situation differently, but she hasn't given specifics, not in public anyway, and whether that, that thinking differently includes a two-state solution or some variation of it, I think remains to be seen at the moment. The fact that Antonio Gutierrez has appointed the envoy, though, that, that would suggest that there is potential for some movement, wouldn't it? Just, just the, the appointment of that, that envoy alone would be cause for optimism, wouldn't it? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say so. Um, since the... Uh, Esin Tata was elected in 2020. There was a UN-backed meeting the following year in Geneva involving the two Cypriot sides and also what are known as the three guarantor powers, uh, the United Kingdom, Greece and Turkey. And after that meeting, at which Esin Tata talked about the two-state solution then, Antonio Guterres said they were going to go away and come back and meet again in a few months, and they never did. Um, and they've never really moved very far forward in any direction since then. So I think what is happening at the moment is Antonio Guterres is giving it another, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say last push, but he feels he needs to give it a push at this moment in time 
after those last three years to see if there is any space for moving ahead with any kind of talks because the two sides, the Turkish and Greek Cypriots, are so far apart on what they think the future should be. But he's, I think he's quite sort of clear that he wants to try and push this along if he can, but it's in no way guaranteed, I think, that there's going to be anything positive come out of this and whether he's going to be able to get the two sides back to the negotiating table. OK, Andrew, thank you very much. Andrew Hopkins, our diplomatic correspondent there. Let's go back to uh, Ankara, Ahmed Kessa. Uh, Ahmed, what do you make of what Andrew was just saying there and, and Antonio Guterres, the United Nations, uh, this report coming out potentially as soon as the next few weeks, certainly you'd hope in the next few months. What do you expect that to, to change, if anything? Uh, I think uh, we will not see any uh, second uh, Anam Pilan uh, in the near future. Uh, because uh, the proposals uh, will not, uh, the diplomatic proposals coming from the UN will not satisfy all the parties uh, at the first glance, uh, I think. Because uh, already uh, there is a solution which works in the ground, and uh, any other solution enforcing the parties uh, to another way, uh, trying to merge them uh, in one parliament again, uh, giving some. Uh, percentages for representation, um, some uh, percentages for uh, representation in the ministries, this will not work anymore because I think the two communities already accepted the current situation in the island. So I think the unique solution uh, which all the parties should accept is the two-state solution. Uh, that's why I think uh, recognizing the independence of the Turkish North uh, Turkish uh, Republic of Cyprus and also the Greek side uh, is uh, a very prominent issue at this way. Uh, one of the struggles which already prohibited the, this kind of development was the acceptance of the Greek side uh, unilaterally to European Union uh, as the unique representative of the Cyprus. But that is not the case because we have the Turks in the island as well. So that's why I think uh, all the solution proposals should recognize uh, the surviving two communities in the island and their future uh, and two sovereign states as well. Otherwise, uh, none of the proposals will be accepted anymore. Already an plan was accepted in the past by the Turkish side, but it was refused by the Greek side. So I think two-state solution will be and should be studied on uh, by all parties. Uh, regarding the issue, you say and this will be. You sorry, sorry to interrupt, but you say it it it, it should be. But uh, again, we go back to the question of of how and and how do you see that developing in the next few? I suppose in in the immediate weeks and months coming up. Yeah, I think uh, first of all, uh, Turkey and other uh, Turkic states uh, organization uh, partners, the countries at the UN, they will uh, prepare some. Uh, resolutions uh, which will given to the United Nations General Assembly first for recognizing the Turkish Cyprus Republic as well as a sovereign state. And this will be start of the new attempts uh, regarding that one. Uh, so uh, together working with Guterres and the General Secretariat at the UN level, uh, then uh, the next step will be reaching at least more than half of the General Assembly members of the sovereign states in the UN uh, Assembly. So this will take, of course, in Kosovo case, we see that uh, it takes around 10 years, not an immediate solution, uh, but uh, it happens uh, step by step. Uh, first of all, I think not only Turkey, but Cyprus, also the Turkic organization states, more than 300, uh, representing more than 350 million of Turks all over the world, should be activated regarding to that one, and they will be activated, I think. So we can see Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan uh, recognizing new states of the independence of the Turkish Cyprus Republic in the upcoming months first, and then carrying this issue to the UN level, uh, and then the next steps, diplomatic steps, will follow this one by Pakistan and other allied countries, uh, natural allies of Turkey as well, I think. OK, Ahmed, for now, thank you very much. Ahmed Kesser in uh, Ankara there. Let's go back to the, uh, the scene, Gurnit, the beach there, and Obaida.
Hitto has been watching it all unfold and, and uh, joins us once again. Abida, it's, it's well over halfway now. It's, it's probably in the final stages, this naval parade. Can you just uh, sort of recap what we've seen and what we can still expect? Uh, there's going to be a, a spectacular finale, I would imagine. Absolutely. Right now at the tail end of this parade, we are seeing four submarines followed by a final frigate go by. Uh, actually, the president uh, of TRNC, Arsene Tatar, came out to the pier and is waving uh, at the uh, flotilla. And uh, right before that, we saw the rest of the ships make it through. We saw two Bayraktar drones do a low flyover. We saw several half a dozen helicopters fly over here as well. We saw uh, uh, two separate groups of jets, fighters, jets also fly over uh, the parade as well and we're waiting now for the solo turk and turkish stars to start their air show that's going to be uh, done in front of all these people thousands of people on the coastline here in girne this very important and symbolic point on the island where the initial uh, attack was launched in 1974 uh, and uh, people here are feeling very festive they're anxiously waiting for uh, this air show which should be a uh, very grand uh, has a lot of color, uh, and this is going to be the highlight, I guess, of the evening. Uh, my personal favorite of all of this is the TCG on a dolo, a billion-dollar amphibious uh, fighter ship uh, that Turkey has spent many years to try and bring to reality. Last year, it went into operation, into service in the Turkish Navy, and it is something uh, uh, that is uh, almost indescribable. It's the size of a city. It's at the center of this parade right behind me, but it almost seems like uh, it's unreal. Uh, it's so large. Uh, you can see how uh, it can handle uh, helicopters landing, jets landing, drones taking off and landing. It can carry dozens of tanks and armored personnel carriers, and it has uh, 1,000, more than 1,200 personnel on it. Uh, and they brought it here today to send a very clear message that the TCG on Adolu, the Turkish Navy. Uh, just tell us about what people there are telling you in terms of what they they want to see uh, for their future, backed, of course, uh, by the Turkish government. People here, they want stability, they want prosperity, uh, they, they want to be recognized because if, for decades they've been under embargo. People have found it difficult to do business. Uh, they can't expand their businesses. They have difficulty doing uh, international business, international trade. The Turkish Cypriots are unable to take advantage of the natural mineral resources that are in their territorial waters. They're unable to attract large investments from the international community, from banks. Uh, from private investors uh, because of their uh, gray zone status. So uh, they say they want to get official recognition so they can move on with their life. Now, those embargoes have not only affected business people and politicians, those embargoes on this part of the island have affected directly the people, the citizens living here, private citizens, their children. They find it difficult to send their kids to good quality schools, to find good medical care. Now, Turkey has has been providing all of this kind of support to this part of the island for many years. But when you're under embargo, when people from the outside of the Turkish community are unable to come and invest and find ways to enhance and, and improve the island and life here on the island, uh, they've been left behind, they say. So they're looking forward to many years of prosperity. They know that it's not going to happen overnight, but they do hope that it happens soon. Uh, President Erdogan, he announced today that students, university students from the island would be able to travel to Turkey and study in Turkish universities and be treated according to the same conditions as Turkish students. So this is a big message to young people who may have been thinking about possibly leaving to go to Europe or to go to the West or to find places other than the island to contribute to their lives and building their futures. But President Erdogan's message was, we are here with you and we want you to succeed. Your 
success is our success. And I think this is something that people are really starting to get convinced of, especially with this display of military might. Uh, the president himself visiting today alongside other Turkish politicians from across the political aisle. Even the opposition was here and President Erdogan was very clear about that today, saying that there is no difference in uh, Turkish politics about our position up on the TRNC. We are behind the TRNC 100 percent and it's something that we won't give up on. And I think this is a very important message that President Erdogan gave verbally. But then this military parade that's happening is uh, carrying a lot of symbolism and a very strong message to everyone here on this side of the island and I imagine on the other side as well. Yes, and we're, we're looking at live pictures just after uh, 16 GMT year on TRT World. Live pictures from Agirne, the coastal uh, city in the Turkish Republic of northern Cyprus, where large crowds have come out to witness this naval parade. And this is, of course, all to mark the 50th anniversary of the Turkish peace operation in the Turkish Republic of northern uh, Cyprus. We have our correspondents there covering that story for us. And Obeda Hito is in uh, Girne. And Obeda, just take us through what we've seen over the last hour or so uh, with this naval parade. And what are some of uh, the vessels that have been showcased during this event? Absolutely. At the center of this parade is the TCG Anadolu, an amphibious fighter ship. Uh, it is the crown jewel of the Turkish Navy, the largest ship. Uh, it can handle uh, landing and taking off of drones, helicopters. It can carry dozens of tanks and armored personnel carriers. More than 1,200 personnel work on it. And it came out here to the center of this harbor uh, at this very important position uh, in Girne. This is where the attack started in 1970. From this position, Turkish soldiers arrived by ship and uh, entered the island, and that's where the TCG Anadolu stopped. Behind it, 49 other naval ships followed. A huge flotilla has been going through here for the past hour, uh, including different kinds of corvette uh, as well as frigates. There were even some submarines, four submarines at the very tail end of the parade. We also saw some Bayraktar drones do a low flyover. We also saw some jets that flew over. Over and we're waiting for a solo Turk and Turkish stars show that's going to start any time now. We also saw some other larger uh, Turkish Air Force uh, planes flying over. We also saw some helicopters that flew over along with the parade. Uh, and uh, people have been waiting here, uh, you know, with great excitement. There's been a Turkish band playing. Uh, there is a huge delegation here of Turkish military as well as Turkish Cypriot military members uh, led by the the president of TRNC, Ersin Tatar, as well as uh, the uh, Turkish defense minister, Yashar Güler. And so it's been a very festive day, but this has been the highlight so far, this uh, parade, large naval parade of 50 ships that have come here on the coast of Girne and are still making their way through while thousands of people are watching uh, with a lot of excitement and happiness. Okay, Obeda, we'll leave it there for now, but do stay with us as we continue to watch that naval parade taking place there in the coastal city of Girne in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And we're going to bring in now Ahmed Kesse. He's a retired full colonel of the Turkish Armed Forces and an associate professor of political science and international relations at Hassan Kolyonju University. Uh, it, it's so good to speak to you, Ahmed, uh, during this time on such a significant day in uh, the history of uh, the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus and, of course, Turkey itself. As someone who has obviously served, how, what are your thoughts when watching uh, this naval parade and also looking back over the last 50 years when this peace operation first took place? Uh, as you uh, mentioned, uh, I think uh, we can understand uh, from the stance of the crowd uh, over there. Uh, and not only uh, those people uh, who are standing there uh, watching the parade are not proud of this one. Uh, and not only the, uh, the people living in Turkey, uh, more than 85 million, I think all uh, more than 350 million Turks living all over the world in all Turkic uh, countries uh, are proud of the situation. Because uh, this is a clear support uh, to the sovereignty of the Cyprus uh, given by uh, Turkey. Uh, let's imagine 
people living in Cyprus for more than half a century, they are being surrounded by embargoes, economic sanctions, political sanctions. They cannot just receive the passport of their state and travel around. Uh, they have to receive passport from Turkey or from Britain, from elsewhere, to be able to travel freely to another country or for businessmen to gain engagements, international engagements with uh, others to develop their business. It is very difficult. So that's why I think uh, at least uh, by, uh, from Turkey, by showing this decisiveness with the same significance as the 100th anniversary of the foundation of Turkish Republic last year in the Bosporus, the same parade is being conducted in front of Girne port. So Turkey uh, mentions that Turkey gives the same importance to the independence uh, and protection, safety and security of the people living in Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus as well. And Turkey will support the independence as a sovereign state. Uh, we will give, we will provide full support for this one. On another way, uh, when we look at the parade, of course, uh, the TCG Anadolu is one of the first uh, unique samples of its kind in the Turkish Navy, which will be followed by others in the upcoming years, because already planned a bigger one which will have the TCG Trakya name, which will carry up the air fighters as well. So this is an ongoing development of the Turkish armed forces as well. The third issue, it is not only the protection of the uh, rights of the students in the lands of the island, but also their rights around the island, in the coastal sites, in the sea, in the maritime, in the economic uh, zones, uh, and continental shelf as well, because uh, the Greek side of the Cyprus, uh, last years we have seen that tried to uh, get use all the rights uh, regarding the national resources, uh, natural resources like natural gas as well, by themselves. But Turkey insisted that the Turkish side also has the same rights for their coastal zones, for their economic zones as well. So that's why. The territory is not the land itself only. Also, we will protect the rights of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus citizens around the continent, around the island as well. So this is also, uh, let's say, uh, protection uh, or decisiveness of showing the uh, initiative to protect their rights in the land and in the sea as well, I think. So that's why uh, that is a very significant moment regarding to that point. Significant indeed, Ahmed Kesser. Good to have you uh, speaking to us here on TRT World on what is a hugely significant and symbolic day as we watch that fly over there uh, showcasing uh, Turkey's air force and military uh, this flyover part of the naval parade that we've seen take place over the last hour or so. If you have just joined us, this, uh, this event is to mark the 50th year of the Turkish peace operation in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. We have the Turkish stars and solo Turk teams taking part in this uh, ceremony. Uh, they are two prominent acro teams in the Turkish Air Force. And as we've been hearing from our guests and our correspondents in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, they've been giving us uh, the feeling among people on the ground. And Obeda Hito is in the city of Girne, a hugely important uh, city, of course. He is watching this. Uh, Obeda, this arguably the highlight of the naval parade. Uh, a highlight for the day for sure you hear the jets flying by right now and people are almost holding their breath you can't even hear yourself speak as I'm speaking to you I can hear my voice now the jets have gone to a distance and they've done about four flybys so far but preceding that uh, there was a large naval parade 50 naval ships that came through the Girne Harbor uh, they arrived last night they, they anchored here just outside the harbor overnight 
This morning we saw them doing some movements and motions until they got into their formation and carried out uh, this parade. 50 naval ships, as I said, including submarines, Corvette class uh, ships and frigates, uh, as well as four submarines. We also saw two Bayraktar drones uh, fly over and actually pretty low. You could see them very close. They're bigger than you think when you think of a drone. You think of a small little uh, drone, but these are very large aircraft uh, and they're unmanned. And this is something that Turkey has taken pride in over the last several years, building up their capacity to produce this kind of military equipment. We also saw some jets fly over as well, some, as, well as some Turkish Air Force, uh, uh, some Turkish Air Force freight uh, planes. Uh, we also saw some helicopters come through. And then uh, just now, as you saw, the uh, Solo Turk and Turkish Stars teams, acrobatic fighter jet flyers are uh, putting on a great show for thousands of people who are here on the coastline, along with the president, Ersin Tatar, the president of TRNC, as well as a, a large delegation of Turkish and C Turkish Cypriot uh, military members and their families, including veterans from the war uh, 50 years ago, from the peace operation, I should say, uh, uh, 50 years ago. Uh, and these flyovers are continuing. Uh, as you said, this is probably the highlight of the day. President Erdogan had a very strong and supportive message this morning. We, he, after he arrived, he attended several ceremonies throughout the day, and he was very clear that Turkey, Turkey's people, the nation, and its military power are all with TRNC, and that that support is not going to stop anytime soon. Certainly a united front. Obeda Hito in Girne, thank you so much. Uh, you've been watching that uh, Navy and military parade taking place, as we heard from Obeda there, arguably the highlight of all of this to those uh, crowds, as well as uh, the leaders of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, is this flyover showcasing uh, Turkey's uh, fleet of uh, jets, many unmanned aircraft, uh, as well, and uh, the Solo Turk and Turkish Stars acrobatic teams from the Turkish uh, Air Force uh, showcasing uh, their might there and also showing their continued support to the leaders and to the people of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus.